I am going to get a lot of hate for this video, but hands down, this year has produced the worst god mockers in all of world history. Now before I reveal to you the one who I think is the most blasphemous, let's look at the list of culprits. First, we had comedian Heather MacDonald. Traveled, went to Mexico twice, did shows, meet and greets. Clearly, Jesus loves me the most. Seriously. So nice, so nice. Everyone was shocked by what happened to Heather McDonald, but I do believe the footage that I'm going to show you is even more shocking. Then we had the baby who made a mockery of Jesus' death on the cross, and not long after, Beyonce followed, mimicking the four horsemen in Revelation. Kendrick Lamar offended Christians all around the world when he turned up to Glastonbury wearing a diamond encrusted crown of thorns, pretending to be the Messiah. Speaking of crowns, I do believe if there was a crown for the worst blasphemer of all of 2022, it would go to this man. It would go to Yosef Abramovich. What he did on Mount Sinai is unthinkable. Watch this video and tremble. We take these green commandments, we look down to Sharm el Sheikh, and we're not satisfied. Yosef, who's been named by CNN as the greatest green pioneer of our generation. Yosef took it upon himself to rewrite the Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments that all relate to the environment. Things like, do not steal the future, let's ensure that this world we live in is clean. Things like, do not bear false witness, politicians. Tell the truth about what's happening around the world with pollution. Also, honour Mother Earth. But perhaps worst of all for me is where they've stolen the Sabbath. They say honour the Sabbath and on this day, once a week, on the Sabbath, they are going to try and lower the world's emissions by 30%. And then on Yom Kippur, that sacred day which I made a whole video about, on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, they have stolen it, they've ripped it off for themselves as a day where they will say no one will move, zero emissions around the world. Now personally, I find that not only blasphemous but incredibly arrogant. Now, please don't misunderstand me. Of course we want to look after God's creation. Of course we want to look after this beautiful world that the Lord has made. We don't want to pollute. We don't want to drop litter. But never forget this. The world will not end because of an increased amount of greenhouse gases on the planet. The world will not end because sea levels are beginning to rise. The world will not even end because some wicked world leader decides to press a big red button. No, the world will end when Jesus comes again. And on that day, I need to ask you, are you ready for this? We're preparing, we're worrying about all these different things around the world, but are you ready for that great day, the day of judgment when the Son of Man will come again on the clouds? Let's answer the obvious question here. Why is this so offensive? Why is this such a big deal to us as Christians when this man, Yosef Abramovich, thought it was a good idea to erase the Ten Commandments, to rewrite them, to perform a ceremony on Mount Sinai and smash them all in the name of the environment. Why has this upset us so greatly? Well, it's because the word of God is eternal. You see, the people of Israel were in captivity for 400 years. In Egypt, in their captive nation, they cried out, Lord God, send us a deliverer. Send us someone to save us. And the Lord answered their prayers and sent them the man Moses. Moses became the leader of the people of Israel and he led them out of Egypt into the wilderness, leading them to a promised land. But whilst they were in the wilderness, God told Moses to bring the people to the foot of Mount Sinai. Tell the people to stay there and then go up the mountain because it is there where I will meet with you. And so Moses did exactly as he was told. And as God promised, when Moses reached the top of Mount Sinai, the Lord met with him. And and there the very finger of God reached down onto these tablets of stone and there God himself carved out the law, the Ten Commandments. That is why it is so blasphemous for any sinful, corrupt man to think that he can take his finger and erase what God has done and rewrite the very laws of the living God. 
I wonder, do you ever hear people say, the Old Testament, it's out of date. The Ten Commandments, we don't need that anymore because we have Jesus Christ. Well, Christ himself actually said this, do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. In fact, Jesus raised the bar of the Ten Commandments. Here's an example. I might stand there and be quite proud. I've been married for eight years and I've never cheated on my wife. But Jesus would look at me and he would say, have you ever looked? at another woman with unclean eyes? Have you ever looked at another woman and had impure thoughts? And if I'm honest, I'd have to say, yes, Lord, I have. Or Jesus would say, you have committed adultery in your heart. Yes, you may not have done the physical act, but I am judging you by your mind and by your heart. What goes through your mind as I tell you that? That God's standard is so high. You might say to me, Joe, yes, I'm no criminal. Okay, yes, I've gossiped a little bit. Yes, at times my eyes have wandered. But come on, I'm not like a criminal. I'm not like one of those guys you see in a jail sentence or on the news. Surely God will let me into heaven. Well, you try telling that to a sea captain. You try telling a sea captain who has a large big boat that there's just one tiny little hole in his sea vessel. That captain will say, even one hole will bring this very large vessel down to the bottom of the ocean. And just one sin, one sin is enough to sink you and I to sink this ship and to condemn us to hell for all of eternity. We might think that actually, yes, we're okay. We're good, decent, upstanding people. But when we hold the Ten Commandments, when we hold the laws of God against ourselves, that mirror shows us that actually we're very sinful. Why is that? Because the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. Now, please pay close attention to me. The law, the Ten Commandments, were never made to save anyone. The Ten Commandments were never created to give a man or woman salvation. No, they were made to show the world that God has an eternal measure for right and wrong. And through the law, through the Ten Commandments, the Holy Spirit reveals to us our sinfulness and our desperate need for the Lord Jesus Christ. The law is a little bit like a map showing the road to heaven. But remember, it is only a map. It is not the road itself. The law shows us that we are liars. We're blasphemers. We have adulterous hearts. We're wicked. We're cruel. We're unkind. We're selfish. We're liars. We're jealous. The law shows us our true self and shows us that we have no hope in ourselves. We should never rely on ourselves and our good works to save us. No, we should always rely on the road, on the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the only way to get to heaven. The law was made to humble us, to show us that every single one of us morally is a failure. And that's why we all need this one word, grace. And grace can be found in Jesus Christ alone. The Ten Commandments will not save you, but grace will. The name of Moses, as powerful as that name was, as great as that man was, Moses will not save you, but the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will. A number of years ago, a prisoner who had served a very long jail sentence was finally let free. And in his first hour, when he looked around and saw the beautiful world, when he could taste the fresh air, when he could hear the birds singing. He was so excited that he was doing cartwheels, that he was doing backflips, and he was shouting at the top of his voice, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. To which point, a little boy tapped him on the shoulder and said, so what? I'm four. But my dear friends, that is how the Christian acts when they realize that they are finally free. For years and years, they've stood there condemned by the law, the law that showed them their reality, the law that showed them that they were destined to hell. But when Jesus Christ came in and poured out his grace, they realized they were free. The bonds of the law had let them go and now they were free and they were a bond servant to Christ alone. How does it work? Jesus Christ Christ, the only one to keep both the ceremonial law and the moral law, offered himself as a sacrifice for sin. The spotless Lamb of God died there for all lawbreakers, for all those who had broken the Ten Commandments. There Jesus Christ was pinned to that cross and there he pleaded for sinners with his own atoning blood.
blood. And then God, the righteous God, the God of the universe, the judge, looks at Christ and he sees the sacrifice and there he's pleased. There the wrath of God was appeased as God's wrath was laid on Christ. It was turned away from us, guilty sinners, and it was turned on Christ so that God can now look at us and judge us and declare us as righteousness because the price has been paid. And now death that would try to claim us and the law that would try to condemn us is gone because Jesus Christ died, paid the punishment for our sins and then rose from the dead showing that I am over the law, I am above the law, I am above death. I have conquered it all because I am the king of this universe and I am asking you, have you asked Jesus to be your king? You see the law makes us sick and tired of ourselves but fond of Jesus. The law condemns us but Jesus saves us. The law strips us but Jesus clothes us. The law empties us but Jesus Christ fills us. The law slays us but Jesus Christ resurrects us. And that is why none of us should despise the law because it shows us how much we need Jesus. Can I tell you a secret? That is why I am so grateful to be a Christian. All the other religions of the world say do this, do that, keep this rule, keep that regulation, clean yourself up and then you will earn yourself a place in heaven, perhaps. But Christianity says no, do nothing, just fall at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ and he'll forgive you and he'll save you. And if you understand nothing, nothing that I've said in this video, please think on this. What must a man, what must a woman and do to be saved. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's really that simple that even a small child can understand it. Just believe in him. Just believe in Christ Jesus and all the work, all the legwork, all the price that has been paid has already been done. It is finished because Christ died for sinners and is all you have to do is come and receive that gift. Okay, if you think you're a Christian, but you're still not sure, here's a video that will give you three signs that you're going to heaven. 